Hey everybody, my name is Spammels and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes vs Jack the Ripper in the previous episode. The Ripper struck again, murdering Annie Chapman and stealing her uterus. Now we spent a lot of time working out where everybody was, what time the murder took place and we came up with some theories. Now one of the leading theories is the idea that the uterus was stolen to be sold on the black market. So Watson is going to go find out about that. Meanwhile Sherlock, he's pursuing the idea that the Canadian doctor is in fact the Ripper. So without any more stalling, let's begin! Welcome back to the game. We're here we are. We're playing as Watson. We're back at Baker Street and we are gonna go to the hospital. Shall I do that? London Hospital. Yes, mate. To the London Hospital. Quick. Yes, mate. My colleague agreed to meet me here in one of the London Hospital rooms reserved for students. Ah, John, you're there already. Punctual as always. Tell me, you don't seem to be in good shape. Is it possible that your recent marriage is making you this morose? Ah, you know me well, Andrew. No, it's a strange and terrible affair that concerns me. Have you read my note? Yes, I admit that I was surprised. It just so happens that I too was asking questions about our morgue. Your morgue? Okay, organ trafficking. That's what we're here for. Stick to the point. What do you think? Have you heard of any organ trafficking within? No, no, John. No doubt there exists some exchange between colleagues. Not quite legal, of course, but nothing that can qualify as trafficking. Since the Anatomy Act of 1832, which permitted the use of unclaimed corpses for science, the black market trade was definitely halted. There are sufficient subjects available for all practitioners and students. Of this, I can confirm. Well, organ trafficking as a lucrative trade is out of the question. Then what is troubling you with the morgue? You are talking about trafficking organs. But I suspect there is trade in whole bodies. Whole bodies? Okay, tell me more about these missing bodies. What do you mean to say? Whole bodies are disappearing? Well, it's confidential, but I know of your discretion and your friendship with the famous Sherlock Holmes. I can tell you that a few corpses have recently disappeared from the hospital morgue. Cadavers that were intended for dissection. That is to say, not claimed, poor, but unknown people. If a single corpse had disappeared, it might have been a bad joke. There are many students who pass through here. It's even a meeting spot. For the majority, they are here to work. A few come here in secret to practice. It also happens that instruments or organs go missing. Nothing alarming, but so many corpses. It's very troubling. So you've got dead bodies just walking out the front door. Nobody knows where they've gone. You've got some organs as well that have gone missing. And you've got utensils going missing. What sort of hospital is this? A, a good one, I guess. You're curing the dead. You. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? But the hospital doctors aren't doing anything? No. That is to say, they would prefer not to call the police at this point. An investigation would no doubt result in the suspension of authorizations for the use of unclaimed corpses. Do you think that you could intercede on our behalf with Sherlock Holmes to clear up this situation? Oh, fine! As if I wasn't busy enough, you know, there's a ripper about murdering everybody! You want me to find your missing dead people? Not a problem, I'll work on it! So, which corpses are missing? Let's get pen and paper out, you know. Which corpses are missing? Ah, I don't know exactly, but I can make an exact list if you would like to wait here for a few minutes. Feel free to look around the room while you wait. It'll bring back memories. Thank you, Andrew. He doesn't even know which ones are missing! Right, well, whilst he's gone, I'm going to rob the place of more stuff. I mean, there's so much robbing going on. They're not going to miss a couple more things. An encyclopedia of anatomy. A page on the human heart is dog-eared. Let's see. Okay, that was a great start. I stole a book. Yes! Okay, uh, so, yeah, that's a heart. I like the heart. The, the valve of water. Yes! I, oh, look at that. It's a little baby. It's a baby. Is it alive or is it dead? I'm pretty sure. Oh, God, it's a baby and it's dead. Uh, babies and bane, brains. That's what, that's what they like here. Okay, what's going it's on? It's here that students come to carry out their experiments. Nice. What else do we have in this laboratory? Sets of scalpels, it said on the front. This surgical instrument resembles a screwdriver. How amusing. It might come in handy. I will return it later. How amusing. Oh, it's like part scalpel, part Philip's head. Oh. It's here that students come to carry out their experiments. They got tables. I remember tables like these. I didn't have them in school, but they were kind of like in the storage room because they had once been used and no longer used. So <laughs> I remember something old. It's here that students come to carry out their experiments. Nice. Are we good? Are we... 
still looking around? Oh, the easel. I sh it's a big... Oh, wow. The last lesson must have been about the human heart. And for a class of beginners, I expect, as this diagram is rather rudimentary. A way to mock them! Everyone got to start somewhere, Watson. These wheeled trolleys are very handy for laying out surgical instruments. This rag is full of grease. It certainly wasn't used for a dissection. Was someone doing some mechanical work here? Ooh! It's like... Everywhere we turn, the plot thickens. There's a hook there. Is that relevant? Like, we're here because of the Ripper. Now we're here because of missing bodies. Now we're kind of looking... I, I don't know even what we're looking for. There seems to be some sort of puzzle at hand here. Can I open one of these? Volume number two? No. Oh, there's a heart here. There is a heart in this jar. Based on its colouring, it hasn't been there long, and it looks like the drawing on the board. Oh my this jar contains two lids with combination locks. Cool. Sorry, why are we helping ourselves to the school's lesson plan toys? Like, what? Okay. So, I'm going to take the surgical instrument for reasons. This wheel won't roll despite all of the added grease. Curious, as Holmes would say. That is curious. Like, why do we care about a dolly that won't roll? Can I... This rag is full of grease. It certainly wasn't used for a dissection. Was someone doing some mechanical work here? Let's take the scalpel. A message. I'll be... Why the devil was it hidden here? Wow! We have a secret message! Oh, it's all heart-related. The magnet is in the heart. Use this board and erase it afterwards. An old prescription. There yeah. is a heart in this jar. This jar contains two lids. I'm on it. So basically, it's saying the name of the part of the heart. I can see where it is on here. So the vena cava superior is there. And I can see that's got a one. You can't see. It's under my webcam. But believe me, it's there. So I now know that... Hmm. I am missing some information. Well, fuck you, you sack of shit. Oh, I see what's got to happen here. I need to use this as evidence. So a bush and then a bush. Yes, use them, please. There we go. Now we're in business. So... We're going to go atrium sinistrum. We've got one and an eight. Valva agota. One, eight, five, two. One, eight, five, two. So let's just start slapping these down. One. Look, there was a bit of paper stuck between the two lids. I wasn't done. I, I could have worked it out without any of the fucking evidence. Right, we've got a six. Great. Message from the heart. A six. Incredible. Someone has hidden a magnet in this heart. But to what end? The mind perplexes with possibilities. We acquired a magnet for no reason whatsoever. Yay. What the fuck are we doing? Can I magnetize something over here? Oh, oh number six. Number six. Desk number six. I'm on the wrong Incredible. side! There is a magnet with a hook behind this pane of glass. I am in need of something. I have a magnet! Watson, look at this! A magnet! Use it! Oh, that's awesome! It's a cool little- Oh, fuck yourself. It's a cool little minigame. I am the best at minigames. Oh, ask anybody. They'd be like, yeah, oh. They're like, oh! Number one, best at mousing. You should see this guy when he gets up in the mo- Oh! Fuck yourself. Oh, yes! Anticlimactic or what? Right. There. All done. Holmes couldn't have done better himself. Well done, Watson. All of your endeavours, you found a hook. What the fuck has that got to do with anything? I have a hook. Oh my god, I can totally hook onto the case with this. I can hook me a ripper with a winner winner chicken dinner all over your face, sir. Ooh. I care what about this for? A hole. I can make out something inside, but how to get it out? I will need a hook. I have a hook! I found it! There's another secret message! Hmm, a coded message. I do believe I will need Holmes. No, we've got this far without the bastard! Here is the list, John. The missing corpses are those of a woman, 40 years old, beginning of August, another, 55 years old, two weeks ago, and recently, a young woman. These corpses had nothing in common except that they didn't have any apparent lesions. 
All of this is very troubling. Well, I think that I have all of the information possible, and I promise that I will do what I can to clear up this business. I must leave you, my friend, and... In the name of our friendship, please, don't cause a stare. To be sure. Thanks again, Andrew. It is I who must thank you, John. Don't forget to keep me up to date and say hello to your charming wife for me. You leave my I'm wife alone! I must go to the wasp's nest to find this rogue that Watson dubbed Bluto. He may be able to provide information on Dr. Tumblety. This lead, although tenuous, is well worth following. I must return to Whitechapel, but it would be better if I did so incognito. To the bedroom! So we're now playing as Sherlock, and thank God for that. That was really stupid. Watson, all of that loose ends, ought to get a message that we didn't even read, and he's like, oh, I need Sherlock for this. I can't possibly fathom this last bit out without the bastard. Costumes. Costumes? Oh, costumes. This should do the trick. That one jacket contained everything you need. Right, we're going back to Whitechapel. So, Abushi, Abushi. And we're gonna go straight to the wasp's nest. The Let's go. Let's go! We're gonna go straight to this guy at the back here. Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Don't- hmm, there's something here. What? Hmm, there's something here. I need something. What are you talking about? It's the floor! Device used for walking upon. Hmm, there's something here. I need something. How could you even spot that from over here? I'll take the old tongue. On tongue to you too. Hmm, there's something here. I need something. On tongue? Hmm, there's something here. I see a jewel. It's fallen between the floorboards. Well, it's a mini game all the same. So one second whilst I play the mini game, you guys at home can play if you like, but really you can't. So, sorry, I lied. Yes! A Hebrew inscription. Going by the length of the chain, it must belong to a child. Sorry, but these puzzles today are really fucking random. I stumble into a smoky bar, and from all the way over here, I can spy a gem that's in a crack so small I need pliers, tweezers to poke at it. This is a bit far-fetched. Right, let's play the game. Hello there. You looking for a gas man? You really a gasser? You sure it isn't a bobby? Well, if you don't need me, I'll be on my way then. I've already been paid up. Stay. Who paid you? A doctor. Marston, I think he was. He told me you'd talk to me about a foreigner name of Tumblety, if I did you a favour. Right, mate. Might happen. What should I do? What is it you need me to do then? Listen to me. At the end of Whitechapel, there's an abandoned dump of a house. Opposite Finley's boarding house. Upstairs in the mess where the gas pipes are, you'll find a sack with something heavy inside. If you look in, you'll regret it here. You find it, you bring it here, and you don't tell a soul, right? Got it. And then you'll tell me about this tumble tea so that I can report back to the doc? Yeah. Doctors know people. And since you is here, it's because he'll move mountains for his American. Me? I don't know much. But you can tell him that he'll have to talk to Squibby. He seems to know lots about plenty. When you come back with a sack, I'll tell you what he needs to tell Squibby so that he snitches on the yank to him. Believe me, mate, it's as explosive as ten miles worth of gas in your damn pipes. Okay, so I go and do what you want me to do, and you're going to tell me the keyword to tell to Squibby some other guy somewhere else which will then get Squibby to talk about the American-Canadian doctor guy, friend, person guy. Whatever. Goodbye. Right then, I'm off. Go. Give me some air. Give me some air. I'll give you some gas. I could arrange for the police to come down here and arrest this thug, but he seems pretty tough and would probably be a lot less cooperative than if I play along. It's best I handle this myself, including meeting the mysterious Squibby. Right, let's get right down to it. So we're going to go to that gas which was by, hi, which was by Finley's boarding house place in the abandoned building. And um, we're going to go sort that out. But I'm assuming it won't be as straightforward as walking in there and going, yep, there's the gas pipe broken, let's fix that. So let's find out. Finley, my boy! It's the abandoned house that Bluto pointed out to me. He must have set up his hideout there. Hmm, there's a strange smell coming from this old building. You are always tinkering with something else. Good day, Finley. Ah, uh, good day, sir. Have we met before? It's me, Sherlock Holmes, but I don't want it to be known that I'm here. Can I count on you? Certainly, Mr. Holmes. I shall be as silent as the grave. 
I'm here about Tumblety. Your tenant, Dr. Tumblety, is he here? I don't think so, but go and find out. Okay, and the lighting? It would seem you've been having some gas problems. Don't talk to me about it. The problem is from the abandoned house not far from here, but nobody has come to take care of it. Perhaps I could go and take a look. Do you have a ladder? Do you have a ladder? No, but I think in the pile of wood under the stairs there is one in pieces. And if you also need something from the scrap heap, some old tools or who knows what, feel free to take it, Mr Holmes. But leave the dishes in good condition. Goodbye! Thank you, and goodbye. And goodbye, Mr Holmes. It's puzzle time! We're going to make us a ladder, because reasons. Is this the rubbish tip he spoke of? Some old nails. They may come in handy. Yes, they were. What's this? This old cloth could be used as a mask. I must moisten my makeshift mask. Why am I making a mask? Finley's ladder is smashed to pieces, but all the parts appear to be here. Cool. This must be a piece of the ladder. Anything else missing while I'm here? Nothing? Nobody? There's a door up there. Oh, there's loads of stuff. Wow, the floor's literally... Part of a perfume atomizer. This lead pipe could help me to repair the gas lines. This must be a piece of the ladder. There's stuff everywhere. Look at all the hands. This must be a piece of the ladder. A heap of rusted iron crockery. This lead pipe could help me to repair the gas lines. Part of a perfume atomizer. This lead pipe could help me to repair the gas lines. A broken hammer. I will have to find a handle. We have so much crap. I made a hammer. Yay. Now they can... Okay, screws and w small planks. Wait, wait, screws. Oh, there we go. Nice. And then these. Nice. And then them. Yes. And then hammer the whole thing together. Yes. As easy as that. Right. Nice. Let's get to it. I hope this ladder will support my weight. Let's do this. What could be inside? We've been speculating for a while now. My cloth mask won't make much difference, but I'll be able to inspect the room for a few seconds. Got well, a few seconds. Okay. Can I quickly pick a up... A small torch. A useful tool for opening safes, I would assume. Got a dead rat. The leak must have been sudden. Even the animals didn't have time to escape. Can I pick stuff? No. Table? Someone left here in a hurry, presumably because of the gas leak. Presumably? The leak must have been sudden. Even the animals didn't have time to escape. What? Oh, there's another rat. Okay. Nice. Lots of dead things. Not much living. It's not a bad room, to be honest. I mean, a bit of cleaning up, a bit of painting. I could really make this work. Can I get this close? Oh. The gas leak is coming from behind this locked panel. I need something. We could smash our way in with the blowtorch on the pocket knife. I need something. Blowtorch. I need something. Well, I don't know what you want from me. Oh, the fireplace. What's here? This iron bar will help me. I can prize this off. I need oh, something. Oh, shitty face. Bushy. That was really dumb. The um, leak is coming from here. The satchel is behind these pipes. This explains why the thug wanted someone who knew about gas. He must have hidden it there in great haste and broke the pipes in the process. That was so dumb. I got a metal casing with a metal padlock on it with a metal pokey stick. And I'm prying it off with gas blowing right past it. If it caused a single spark or anything, boom! Okay, so can I get in here? The satchel seems to be quite stuck. I don't think I can get it out without passing out. For good. I need a more suitable mask. The kind used by tanners would do nicely. Just take a deep breath and then we can get our face in there. Okay. We need to come back with the appropriate gear, apparently. How is he? Can I open the door? No. How do I leave? How do I? There we go. Bentley, I'll be back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to uh, Solomon's. The, uh, the, 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 the leather guy. He made the supports for the, the prosthetics. Oh, I don't know words. They're failing me just now. Solomonovich, you crazy bastard. How do, sir? Hello. I'm sorry to say, but I'm closing. But wait, I got some jewels. I am here because I found this. Abraham's beard. The son of one of my neighbors was beaten in the street a few weeks ago and it was stolen from him. If you would give it to me, I promise to return it to him and get you a reward. Money doesn't interest me. Who are you, sir? And what do you want from me? I'm a friend of Dr. Watson's. Uh, you know him, don't you? In that case, welcome. Dr. Watson is a great man, and I would be pleased to help one of his friends. Nice! Give me a tanner's mask, Snappy! You work the leather and perhaps even tan it yourself. I believe tanners wear special masks to protect themselves from the toxic emissions given off by the vats used to soak the leather. 
I have a gas leak to fix, and I won't survive without something effective to protect myself with. Go see my cousin Abraham, who has a pet shop a little further down the road. Tell him that Isaac sent you. <laughs> That's me. Hi, Isaac. Goodbye, Isaac. I'll be off now. My regards to Dr. Watson. By Abraham's beard, you're annoying, because I came here for something and you didn't give it to me, but you have lots of other leather things. Right, let's go to the pet shop, because Isaac hasn't got one. And let's see what we can do about this. So, oh. Is this it? No, that's not it. Yeah, pet shop. Dear God. There's no idea of personal space here. They just walk right into you. They didn't give a shit. Okay, I was dumb. I found it. I've been running around like a headless chicken. So there's our Solomich guy. Wait, wait, wait. So over there is a dispensary. So if I go just down the road, a tinsy wincy bit. It's a big old sign, Solomonovich. And just over here, importer of exotic animals. There this we go. This is a pet shop. There we go. Got it, found it, nailed it in one. Hi! By Abraham's beard! You look just like Isaac! Hello, sir. Hello. Do you have a mask? You must be Abraham Solomonovich. I, I came on behalf of your cousin, Isaac. He said that you might be able to help me. I need a good mask to protect me from gas emissions so I can repair a leak. Yes, it should help you. But I let it drop into the big snake cage and they are very dangerous beasts. I don't know how to retrieve it. But you must be equipped to deal with these creatures safely, surely? Of course, but I broke my hook. It should be over there. If you succeed in getting that beast from its cage, you will be doing me a great favor. There's no denying it, today's episode is pretty random as fuck. I mean, we're supposed to be hunting down a ripper, a murderer, the box row murderer, all of the above. But instead, we're fixing a gas main by also helping this guy get the, ga the mask from a snake cage whilst Watson looks down for missing bodies. I, I know all these are going to bring us back to point, and that point being the Canadian doctor. Because that's what we have to find in all of this. We're trying to get to him. And in order to get to him, we've got to go through the Fug. Because the Fug has the information about where he is or what we can do with him. So let's... Oh, what's this? I have the broken hook. I can repair it, but I'll need some materials. Perhaps I'll find some material at Isaac's that will be of use. Do I not already have... Got a blowtorch? I can... No. Okay, hang on. Back to Isaac's! Perhaps I'll find some material at Isaac's that will be of use. Isaac, you bastard! I found your brother's pet shop. He's a sack of shit just like you. You're both useless and worthless to me. But I need some stuff. So give me some stuff. I got to torture you. I don't want to torture you. Can I just take your stuff? No? Fine! I need a few items for your cousin Abraham. May I borrow them for you? Of course. You're welcome. Is that a snake on your table? Kind of looks like a big old snake. Okay. Uh, what? Oh, here. That, oh, the stuff I need is just in front of you. How convenient! This should do the trick. We're going to bend this back into shape? No! What the fuck? What's this? This should do the trick. Big old pointy thing. We can stab the snake and blame it all on Isaac. Over here. Hey, Bushy! This may come in handy. So we've got some iron threads, uh, some tongs, and a pokey metal shank. There we go, and then Ibushi, and then... Oh! And then can I melt the whole... Okay, I'll be back! Back to the pet shop! Isaac's brother, you bastard! Abraham! Where's that fucking... There we are! Right, watch yourself. I need something. Shut your face! I got something. I need something. Oh, Abraham! Have you let the snake out of its cage? I beg your pardon! Are you making a move on me, my bearded buddy? Ah, cage! This cage must do to hold the snake. Oh! Oh, so do I... I need something. Oh, sh I hate you! There's more cages! This cage must do to hold the snake. This cage must do to hold the snake. I have plenty of cages now! No, I can't do that. Right, okay, this. We're in business. Go, snakey bastard! Poke him, poke him. There we are. Magnificent. 
as easy as that. If I may ask, why did you have such equipment? I haven't always had a pet shop. I found my. I don't no, care. The boarding house. Really, who cares about his backstory of why he comes to own a mask? Who fucking cares, you bearded bastard? Goodbye, your snake. I'm leaving it there. Suck a dick. I'm not even gonna walk fast travel. Fast travel right back to that boarding house. Where is it? Is that it? That's the police station. Finley, I got stuff. Goodbye! Gas, prepare to eat shit and die. The satchel, rather heavy and firmly wedged, dislodging it will take a concerted effort and is better done in a safe environment. I must repair this leak before I can get the satchel out. Oh, here we go. Puzzle time with Spamos. So, that's a missing piece, and that's a missing piece, and this is a missing piece. And then we're gonna weld them together. Nope. Okay. So, I can turn the... Oh. 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 I can check the pressures for the pipes? Now we're in business. So if I can get all of these to zero. Zero. It's a whole lot of zero. Is that good? Zero should mean there's no pressure. It's still going! The satchel, rather heavy and firmly wet. I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna push it to 100. There isn't enough gas. The pressure isn't high enough. Oh! More pressure! There we go! Yes! Yes! Oh, now we're cooking! I'm gonna weld all these parts back together again. Like that! Yes! That means now the pressure over here should be... Elementary. Yes! That was a really stupid and difficult puzzle. It, it wasn't stupid, it was just annoying as fuck. This much-talked-about satchel is very heavy and seems to contain metal dishes. I told Bluto that I wouldn't look inside, but I've little need to. It's quite obvious that it's full of silverware. There's a kitty cat on the window ledge! Kitty, don't be in here! There's still gas in here. Looking at the state of this cat, it won't survive much longer if it stays here. We must save the kitty cat. Come on, I will take you to your safety. Let's go to the wasp's nest. Are you in my bags? Yep, yeah, there's a cat in my bag. Goodbye! Goodbye, goodbye. Let's go to the wasp's nest. Wait a second, Sherlock, I've got an idea. Rusted iron dishes? More like... Full of crockery, the satchel makes the same noise and weighs about the same as if it were filled with silverware. So now we have the stolen jewels and he's got a sack of shit. Goodbye, Finley! I'll see you in the comment section. Boosh! Bluto, my boy! I've got a sack to give you. I need something. Oh, you f Pass the sack to me. Did you look in? I give you my word, but it won't belong to you until you tell me where Squibby is. Fine. The poor idiot was taken by the peelers the other day. I don't know why some chap started to screech about it. He was the Whitechapel killer, but he ended up followed by an hysterical mob. In a flash, the bobbies had him rounded up and locked down. Do you mean at the local police station? Might. Might not. But if you or the doc talk to him, tell him that about the kayak business. I'll forget our score if he rats on a yank. He'll know. Now, hand over the bag. I say, that's all a little bit wishy-washy. I'm not sure it's worth the satchel. Hey, don't shake it like that, moron. If you don't want to end up with a knife in the back, you'll get busy with the pipe. Got it? Here, take it. That'll teach me for being a good Samaritan. Honestly, how rude. Honestly, how rude! I'd best be off now. Better to not be around when he opens the satchel. Run! Okay, so the deal there is Quibbly is currently arrested in the police station, and Quibbly owes that guy something but that guy will call the deal square as long as quibbly speaks to me about the canadian doctor let's go to the police station i can't just waltz into the police station to ask if they've got squibby locked up i'll have to come up with a ploy to find out if he's actually there then i'll need to get the policeman to leave for just a few minutes so i can talk to the prisoner damn it that sounds so complicated so you little jackanapes. Oh. You want to ride on the big whirl. I want to ride the whirly. Day, perhaps, Mum. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Oh, big whirly. You magnificent monstrum of fun and entertainment. Give me some information. As a matter of fact, I would like to know if a chap I know called Squibby happens to be in this police station, and how many policemen are inside. Information? 
Yes, but time is money for me, you know. Oh, if I can get some time with you and Squibbly! Here are a few guineas. So, Squibby. I'll tell you everything that I know, my ducky. Nothing. <laughs> I know nothing about whether Squibby is there and I don't give a damn. The bobbies don't whisper sweet nothings to me, like the girls in the nice places. And now I'll get lost before I get all worked up. Hey, if you have something to offer to a lady, I could tell you a little bit more, maybe. They don't talk to me like the girl in the nice place, so I need to go to the whorehouse, basically. I'll be back. You do that. And I'll be the back. Girl from the nice houses. That monster. Oh. Danny must have been referring to establishments like Miss Bella's that Watson told me about. Oh, we're going to the whorehouse. Although they will never compare with your beauty, Bella! You are a friend of Dr. Watson? Indeed. A fine man, your Dr. Watson. He got me out of a damn business with one of my clients. We gave this boar a lesson to remember, and he's since gone to France, having snagged one of my best girls. But it's a break from all of her chatter. You're looking for information about the police, is that right? I can't help you there. The girls concerned are busy. And anyway, I don't have the time. Can you tell me about bottles? What is bothering you so much? A client left me a case of bottles as payment. It happens all the time. I'm saddled with all this stuff. He told me that these perfumes were the latest thing straight from Paris. Well, I'd barely smelled the first one when I nearly fainted. There might be some good ones in there, but I'd have to find out if it's really perfume so that it won't burn the skin off my pretty girls. Madam, I will undertake to tell you exactly which of these products are perfumes if you agree to entrust them to me for a little while. In exchange, I would like to know more about Squibby. Yes, I know him. We've struck a deal, Mr. Holmes. I'll give you these bottles. Yay! Let's go back to Baker Street. I will need a book to help me identify Miss Bella's perfume. I believe the bookshop on Glenworth Street, not far from Baker Street, has just reopened. Let's go and take a look. Yes, why not? I mean, Jack the Ripper? No, fuck that shit. We're going to identify some fucking perfume. You know what? We're going to go to a pet shop as well and get a snake out of a cage. What's the fucking at it? Let's go find some dead bodies that went missing. Yes. All of this because of the outside opportunity that this Canadian doctor might be the killer. I don't know about you, but it just seems like an arse ton load of side objectives. Call me crazy, but how about this? We go to where the guy's living because we know he's renting a room from Finley. So let's go to that room and just wait for him to come home. Hey, look, it's Mr. Detective. It's... Shh, I'm undercover on a special mission. Don't blow my cover. Aye, aye, Captain. We won't let it slip. Now, what are you doing in this area at such an hour? You're far from home, aren't you? We've come to give Pounce a hand. About his cat, you know. Downstairs round is a nasty old lady Big Danny lives. She threatens to kill Pounce's cat, because she's energic. Or so she says. And it makes a cough and vomit just by seeing one. Allergic. Oh, that's it. She stoned Pounce and his cat yesterday, and the poor thing took off and hasn't been seen again. We've been looking for it, but nothing. Okay. Cats. Does that cat there belong to Pounce? Ah, oh, look at the little kitty Bert! cat. That's my birdie. Be careful. He is injured. Uh, let's take him to the pet shop. We might be able to take care of him. It's mewing. Goodbye. Let's go to the pet shop, children. Let's go to the pet shop. Here it is. If you all go in at once, you'll scare the animals. Pounce, come with me. Everyone else, stay here. Come, Bounce. By Abraham's beard, this kitten is injured. What can I do for you? Here's your mask back. I have come to return your mask. Ah, thank you. If you need something else, do not hesitate. It's funny you should ask because, well, I've got a kitty cat here. Don't hold it by the head. It's not feeling very well. Ah, oh, you mischief. No, it's not. So make the cat better. May I present young Pounce and his cat, Bert. Poor Bert. He's been injured. It's Big Danny who threw a cobblestone at him. Big Danny? Danny the Jaw? The Terror of the Highlands? Oi, that's her, mister. 
Big Danny and her big whirly. You know this lady? Lady is not the appropriate word. Fury, more likely. Danny is a night worker. Before that, she performed in a circus where she fought against men for a penny a round. It was said that she never lost a fight. Is there anything you can do for poor Bert? I don't know. This cat seemed to be in a sorry state. I have a book on cats over there. Can you find it while I look at its wound? Yes. You're gonna be okay! Where's the book? It's over here somewhere. Book me! I found it! That's adorable! Aha! This must be the cat book Abraham needs. Aha! Here is the book on cats. Thank you, my man. I will see what I can do for this cat. He is loving the cat! He's like now trying to read his book and the cat's like, dude, Dude! What am I doing? Bookstore! Okay, so back on the map, we have a new dock called Barnes Bookstore. It's under my webcam, but you can kind of see the nameplate there. Boosh! We're inside a bookshop! Amazing! Okay, let's be snappy. I'm here for a book about perfumes. Be really quick, I'm Sherlock Holmes. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you the new bookseller in the neighborhood? Yes. My name is Barnes. You're one of my first visitors. Welcome. What are you looking for? A book! I'm looking for a work that can help me identify perfumes. A book that deals with vegetation and its possible uses in the domain, for example. I would recommend the Encyclopedia Spartica about vegetation. It consists of a reference on the matter. This book is the most complete that there is. Fine, I will take it. But it's just that, um... <clears throat> I have no idea where it is. Oh, you're fucking useless! That my predecessor classified works by their acquisition date. Nowadays, we advocate a thematic classification. However, I am getting down to the task. You aren't looking for anything concerning the history of the scripts. I'm fascinated by the subject. It is no doubt very interesting, but I need this book Spartica without further delay. Fine, fine. I will try to find the acquisition date of this encyclopedia, Mr... Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Ah, oh, fantastic. You are the man for the job. Perhaps you could try to find the missing dates. That will buy you some time. I understand you're looking for a book about flowers. It's in here somewhere with the last guy. What an asshole. But instead, I have a book here about birds. They're like flowers and the flowers of the sky. Do you want this book instead? I hate you. Yeah, I'm going to be jump cutting a lot of this. There are some dates missing. Yes. I forgot to mention that detail. The dates were written on cardstock attached to the columns, and there was one date per section. As one goes along, you will see there is no specific order, and certain are missing. I remade the labels, but I don't know where to put them. They're there on the counter. Are there any other details to know? The proprietor inscribed a date every two years since his arrival in 1864, up until now, that is, 1888. He left a note regarding his method of shelving, but I didn't understand a word. I do believe, in fact, that he was a bit mad. Goodbye! It's like... Puzzles now for the sake of puzzles all of the numbers placed on the same column must have different ending numbers For example 1886 and 1866 together would create an inconceivable disaster The dates whose numbers added together will produce the same sum cannot be put in the same column if they indicate the same sense Number of dates. What? For, for, what? Right, so. Oh. Uh, mate, where are the cards? Here are the cards. Right, fang. Okay, well, it can't be a two. Oh. Oh, fuck myself. What? Oosh. Oosh. Yes! There, Mr. Barnes, the labels are in their correct places. That should facilitate your classification. Have you found my book? Yes, what luck it was to meet you. It was acquired in 1882. I will look for it. Thank you very much. I would suggest that you organize your books quickly. I am in the habit of visiting my local bookstore at least once a week. You are right, Mr. Holmes. A little social message there. Every week, Sherlock Holmes goes to his bookstore. It is cool to go to your bookstore at least once a week. 1882, it should be in here. I'm looking for a kitty cat book. No, perfume book. There we go. Perfume is described as blah, this blah. This encyclopedia on plants and spices is just what I need to analyze these so-called perfumes. Let's return to Baker Street. Why not? Goodbye, bookman. Let's go to Baker Street. I will need my work table. 
here's the work table. Okay, it's nearly one o'clock at the time of recording this, but this episode isn't quite done, so I'm gonna go to bed. We'll pick up this story in the morning. So three, two, one! Welcome back to the room, it's the next day, and we're gonna finish this up. So this is crack on with this. Straight to the mixing- I need something. Oh, shut your face. Okay, hang on, hang on. This! Case of perfumes on the desk. Let's get to work. Oh. I must analyze these perfumes. Right, you are there, Ted. Let's burst straight through this because I want to get this over with. This video goes live in like 12 hours. I need to get this done. Now, okay. Perfumes. Ah, oh, fuck life. I don't know. A blah blah blah. This shape represents the essence of the perfume, which I must recreate. These shapes represent the smells at my disposal. This shape represents the essence of the perfume, which I must recreate. This shape represents the essence of- Oh no! There we go, one of these. This shape represents the es- Yes! This shape it represents fits the- fits fucking perfectly! Oh wait. Oh, as easy as that, can I double- This perfume is ghastly. Okay, I understand now! Right, this. Abushi. That's fucking horrible. So, Abushi With- my, my microphone's in the way. Sorry guys! One second! Uh, we want a stubby bastard there, with a slightly taller bastard right there. That's not quite right now, is it there? And a super small- Excellent. Yes! Now, on to the next step. Shut up, next! Boosh! One of them. Nice! That's straight in there, like a boss. That goes there, of course it fucking does. This one next to it. Elementary. Fine, I have to go to the brothel. Yes! Fine! I have to go to the place where all the sex happens. Let's do that! Oh, Hi, bad man. How's my hair? How's my hair looking? Is that is that? Oh, that's fucking much, much better for brothelling. Betty, boo the brothel bitch. Boo! So, my dear man, have you reached a verdict? I have distinguished the good perfumes from the bad, but even the good ones are nothing more than common sense for adolescents. Bah, who cares? It'll freshen up a few of my girls. Wait. There's a perfume here called Valerian. What is it? It's not really a perfume, technically speaking, unless you like cats. It's more of a kind of medicine. It smells strange. I don't really like it. Here, I can give it to you. And I have some information. Squibby is most assuredly locked up at the police station hereabouts. It would also seem that he's the one who doesn't want to come out. We know! Danny! Who the fuck's Danny? Tell me some, some words about the Danny. Do you know someone by the name of Danny? Danny? Big Danny, Nutcracker? Oh! Uh, the one who hates cats? That's the one. You're interested in that kind of bird? Uh, be like dipping your biscuit in a pig's trough. <laughs> She's dangerous, a real cyclone. So beware. And her appearance. She claims to adore perfumes. <laughs> She'd need this whole box to smell sweet. That's a good idea. That I doubt it'll take much to make Danny cooperate. Uh, perhaps by offering her a little gift. A little Let's gift? Let's go to the police station. Always talking over me, Sherlock. We need to talk about this. Let's go to the big whirly and let's offer her a box of smelly treats in Hybasa and delights. Go! Now what that's going to do is... That's gonna make her smell like cat piss. And the cats are gonna love the shit what's that kid running away from. Cats are gonna love it, they're gonna cause a distraction, and we are gonna go into the police station, it's gonna be marvelous, everyone loves it, it's the best plan we've ever had, everyone tells me it's the best plan. Hi! Big whirly boo of the big boobs, how you doing? You still there, honey pie? Yeah. Oh, one second, I need to get something out for you. I got a really big gift to give you. I'm gonna I'll be back. You do that. Yeah, be careful, this doesn't squirt on your face. Do you remember me? Would you be kind enough to help me by telling me how many policemen are inside in exchange for this bottle of perfume? Of course you fucking would. Go! This is perfume. He's got a funny look on his face. Me, I want a pretty bottle with a button so that I can spray it all over myself. Got it? What difference does that make? Right, hang on. One of those. Oh, there you go. Easy peasy lemon. Squeeze me. A real perfume for a real lady. Oh, there ain't much in the station. 
It was pretty busy, but now there's only one constable, dearie. There we are. Now Danny has been sprayed with valerian, a scent that's irresistible to cats. I must create a diversion in the street to make the policeman come out, but I need some cats. Lots of cats. To the pet shop. To the pet shop! I must go to the pet shop. Children, gather! We've come to give Pounce a hand. Oh, shut up. That was cat, you know. Yes. Go! By Abraham's beard, have you finished with the kitten? What can I do for you? The cat, I want it. Bert the cat. So, how is Bert doing? Uh, he'll pull through. But he must eat, and I have no food for him here. We will need to find him some. And where can we get some cat food? We must find Hardiman. He sells meat for cats. It's around this time when he passes the end of the road. You might be in luck. You'll hear him from far away. He was always calling beep, beep. Thank you for everything, Mr. Solomonovich. Look for the weirdo going beep, beep. So, Pounce, shall we look for the cat food seller? Poor Bert has to be fed, and I might have some work for you and your friends. Let's go! Goodbye, Abraham, you bearded bastard! Where's the beep? beep, beep. There he is! Found him! He's straight ahead of us. That was stupidly easy. What's your name? I was going to go Bert, but I don't know. Beep, beep. Good evening, sir. How do? A little kebab for the cat? Kebab? Cats don't eat kebabs! These little brats can't possibly all be yours. Pardon? Oh, no, none of them. Ah, children, there are pride and joy, and yet... Shut up! Give me the food! Do cats really like kebabs? They adore them. How many would you like? I'll take the lot. I beg your pardon, sir. <laughs> How much for the lot? For two pounds, they're all yours, my lord. It's a deal. Listen up, my little soldiers. You need to find all the cats in Whitechapel and lead them towards the police station. You'll be armed with delicious kebabs to entice them. Go, as quick as you can now. But those kids are probably starving themselves and will- If my calculations are correct, the cats will be seduced by Danny's odor and will throw themselves on her. That should cause enough of a commotion to get the policeman to come out onto the street. Big whirly! Oh, that fucking leg. Oh! Oh, kitties! Release the pussy army! Come on now, children. Let the cats alone. Ah! <laughs> The cats want to ride the big whirly! What's all this racket? Calm down. Come on, out. And make those cats shut up. That's awesome. Well now, let's see what I can do about Squibby. We're in! Go! Straight to the basement. This must be the door that leads to the cells. Really? Is that a key or Oh, well, I'm I'm doing this. I'm 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 making that a thing. What sense did that make? I don't know why that even worked. I'm not even going to complain. I'm here in the lockup. Oh, hi, man. How's it going, bruh? One second. No oh. Nobody there? Ah, uh, nobody there. Okay, just a house of you. Not much good for company, but let's talk. So, what's going on? And who are you? I've come to talk to you about Tumblety. So you're here to kill me, are you? Absolutely not. I've come on behalf of someone you know, who told me you have some explosive news about this American. In exchange, he has settled your bill on the kayaks. You ain't no street person, you. You're a bobby, trying to wind me up, aren't you? Not at all. Will you agree to talk? Not a chance. I'll give nothing away for nothing. I don't have to follow Bluto's orders. I'm in it up to my neck. And the bobbies won't agree to keep me locked up here for the rest of my life. You mean to say that you are here of your own accord? Damn right. Only death awaits me out there. I was almost lynched because I was blamed for the murder of those poor girls who were chopped up like animals. The police put me here for my own safety. That's where this journalist showed up. A journalist, you say? Did he tell you a story? A journalist? I socked him once for disrespecting me down at the pub. He said I'd pay for it one day. And that day came. He said he was going to squeal to the papers about me. With my description and my tattoos and all, I was arrested at the same time the police said they'd caught the Whitechapel killer. While waiting to write the article, he started the rumour. Now nah, the streets ain't safe for me no more. 
I understand. Listen, if I find this journalist and make him promise to not write a word about you, and if I also agree to pay for you to get out of London, will you tell me everything you know about Tumblety? You sure know how to speak to ruffians, don't you? You got yourself a deal. What's the name of this journalist? Bulling. Tom Bulling. Tom Bulling? That name sounds familiar. That wouldn't be the journalist that Watson met at the Wasp's Nest. Huh? Ah, no, nothing. I was just thinking aloud. Goodbye! Well, I'll be going, Squibby. You're right. It ain't healthy here. I shall leave Bluto's treasure at the station. The police will know what to do with it. Nice! Right, let's wrap this story up right there. So I shall leave Bluto's treasure oh. at the station. The police will I... know what to shut do up, with it. Shut up, shut up. I don't get to keep anything nice, do I? Here's the treasure. I shall leave Bluto's treasure at the station. The police... Yep, 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 yep. Oh, hi! Hey, but what are you up to here, you? Off with you and make it quick before I take you in. For the Queen! Let's go to the wasp's nest. I'm on my way, Sherlock. Stop bossing me around. We're going to go back to the wasp's nest. We're going to identify that uh, reporter. He's the guy that we got the red ink for. He was a bit drunk and he went home. Now, he's causing shit, making it hard for our good friends there to no, leave. If Bluto sees me, it could prove to be quite dangerous. Let's return to Baker Street to change. Yeah! Looking much more respectable now, that top hat. Hi, everybody. My name is Sherlock. I'm here to... I don't know what am I here for. Hi, lady. Good evening. There'll be a nice tip in it for you if you can tell me if you recently saw a journalist here. Yes, sir. A damn nuisance, that man. And a real cad. He cursed me out something fierce for staining a book that he put down, even though it was him who was shaking so much that he soiled it with a whole lot of ale. My heart bleeds! This book, though. He was reading a book? <laughs> Not a real book. A hate me rag. He put it down on the ground, and I'll put it in the paper bin for the stove. It should still be there if it weren't already put in the fire. I must go and investigate. Goodbye, miss. At your service, me lord. To the fire! Oh, Spring-Heeled Jack, the terror of London. Poor beans. I'm not Spring Hilled Jack, a fantastical character that terrorizes the population of London. This journalist has some far from cheerful reading. Indeed. What's this? This is what, this is the paperwork that he was leaning over. Some paper. Ink stains. This must be the table where Bulling writes his copy. Poff the Raven, never more. Okay, well, where is... Oh, there's the... No, if Bluto sees me, it could prove to be quite dangerous. It would be very dangerous! Only the act of a foolish man would do so. Hey, buddy. Evening. A pint for me and have one for yourself. I'm looking for a journalist, a good client of yours. Goes by the name of Bulling. Ring any bells? Haven't seen him for a day or two. He must be sleeping it off somewhere. Where to hide from the landlord when you owe some serious bread? What paper does he work for? I don't know. But I can't believe that he works at his rag, because he's always round the pub scribbling his useless papers. The last time I seen him, he spent all day at that table drinking and scratching away from morning till night. He finished by celebrating, and without the help of a rich chap, he would have fleeced me of a guinea. Watson was that rich chap. Goodbye! Thank you, my friend. That's nothing. So what happens now? Everybody's been so friendly, but they don't know Jack about where he is. Some paper. Ink stains. This must be the table where Bulling writes his copy. There's nothing else in here. Let's try leaving. Let's return to Baker Street. Tom Bulling isn't here, but the Baker Street Irregulars should be able to track him down. Perhaps Watson will have something to tell me in the morning. Yeah! Up at last, Holmes. Were you able to get anything from that crook at the wasp's nest yesterday? Not yet, but I am working on it. And yourself, Watson, what were you able to find out from your colleague about the sale of second-hand female parts? Holmes? Well, actually... Let it be, Watson. It was tiring, no doubt. Well, as soon as I mentioned the possible existence of a black market dealing in human parts, everyone in the hospital became very tense. This silence, therefore, tells us more than anything else at this point. However, I have trouble believing that such a peculiar dealing as that involving Annie Chapman's uterus could have gone unnoticed in the medical community, if that is indeed what happened. That's my opinion, as well as that of my old university colleague. He maintains that any form of organ trafficking would be impossible, not to mention unnecessary. However, he did tell me something rather troubling. The unexplained disappearance of several corpses from the hospital morgue. 
he has allowed me to investigate, provided I do so discreetly, and here is what I found, concealed in what appeared to be a secret letterbox. Interesting, an encoded message. Indeed, and look, the symbol of a certain well-known Spartaca encyclopedia is printed on it. Perhaps it will help in deciphering the letter. Thank you, Watson. Are you going out again? I promised a new patient, Captain Stenick, I'd go round to examine him. He lives nearby. I may be back before you've had a chance to decipher this mysterious message. Hooray! What do we do now? What's going on? Watson left me, basically. I have to decode the message, but I don't want to. I'm out of time. This episode ends here. Now, wait until the next episode. We're gonna decode the crap out of that message. We're gonna decode that cipher from the hospital. It's gonna give us some information about the missing bodies. Also, we're gonna go and harass the guy from the press to leave Bluto alone, or whatever the chap's name is. Squ it's Quibbly. Squibbly Quibbly. And that means Quibbly will talk to us about the Canadian doctor, who we think might just be Jack the Ripper. So we're finally coming to a climax. Next episode, I'm assuming something big might happen. Anyway, on that bombshell, thank you very much for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody!